What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Terminus. This is a game that's being developed out of Korea by one guy, and it's a classic roguelike zombie survival RPG. Everything about it is procedural, and you are just a guy who is trying to find his way to a place called Terminus, which is at the end of the railroad tracks. This is a game about resource management. It's a game about picking your fights. It's a game about deciding what you want to carry with you so that you can walk the railroad tracks a little bit longer if you've even indeed found the railroad tracks that go to Terminus and figuring out what you're going to do to get around the hordes and nasty monsters and things that tend to inhabitate the world. Did I say inhabitate? Inhabit? Well, how did that happen? I don't know. Apparently a couple of linguistic wires got crossed. Let's not, let's, let's not spend too much time on it, okay? We'll just pretend it never happened. We'll move forward with the video, okay? Uh, Terminus, it's available right now in early access. The game is by no means done, uh, but you can get it at the link down below in the description in case you wanted to check it out. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down there just in case you wanted to hang out live. If I had to describe this game to somebody, it's basically like an abridged version of Cataclysm DDA. So if Cataclysm DDA ever seemed like a game that was just kind of inhospitable to you, or like really, really difficult to learn, Terminus might actually be like a good middle point for that. And the game is nowhere near done, but it does have some interesting ideas and I have enjoyed the time that I've spent with it for the last hour and a half or so. So anyways, let's dive on into a new game. Uh, we gotta make a character. The game does have a little bit of meta progression. So you unlock things basically by surviving campaigns and you will get new classes and things that you can play as. There's not too much of a difference between them except for their starting stat spread and like what item they start out with. But still, a little bit of that meta progression right there is actually kind of nice. Um, we can be a soldier. We can be a firefighter, or we can be a police officer. Basically what that comes down to is if you're a soldier, you're really good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you are playing as a firefighter, you are really good at crafting and using improvised tools. And if you are a police officer, you're really good with guns. I'll probably just go with the soldier for right now. We'll start from the top left. I mean, there's no guarantee that we're going to live through this thing. We got to name our character. It doesn't really matter. It's not super consequential naming your character. Uh, you can change it at any time while you're playing the game if you want. There are a number of different skins you can choose for your character as well, like you can go through. I would like to see this expanded and be made customizable so you can pick what hair you want, what color shirt you want, what color pants you want, and like a couple of different models for each of those with like different hats and brims and things of that nature. But it's not like a required thing, but it would still be nice. Uh, down here we've got to pick our stats. We didn't start out with any points because it used the allocation that I used the last time I played through the game. Uh, basically you've got strength. Strength allows you to carry things and you can carry a heavier weight. Uh, strength in this game is kind of conceptualized so you can carry basically as much stuff as you want to carry but this game uses a modified system like XCOM had. The old XCOMs, not the new ones, where you effectively have time units and each time unit comprises an hour. I think you have like 20 time units basically. I guess it depends how well fed and whatnot you are. If you're like in perfect condition you have 20 time units per hour and so anyways, that means that each TU is what you did for like three minutes. And then if you don't have all of your stats kind of maxed out, you get 10 TUs per hour. And so you're basically half as efficient. But anyways, strength dictates how that scales. How much stuff you can carry before your AP starts to get nerfed. Uh, we have health over here. Uh, this is basically our AP. How much we have, what we can do in a given grouping of time. Uh, we have observation. This allows you to see farther out, provided that there is light. Uh, we have combat. This is basically how much damage you have when you're hitting a zombie. We have our agility, and that's our dodge. And then we have our dexterity, which is how good we are at repairing things and crafting things. And so anyways, I've already got these points in kind of where I like them. Uh, you can also pick a trait down here. As of right now, you don't start out with that many traits. I don't know if maybe if you take less stats, you have more points for this right here. It doesn't look like you do, so let's see. You can use trait points to select up to three traits. You get one trait point for each occupation cleared. Ah, so there's some more meta progression right there. So every time you beat the game with an occupation, you get another talent point. Okay, good. I actually don't know how I missed that in my initial run through of the game. Probably because it's just like a little eye over here that you got to click on in order to find that out. Uh, I figured... I don't know, maybe later on in the game we get to buy some of these or something. But for right now, really, we're selecting like a special item that is a vice of our character. 
on a fresh account, you can either be into alcohol, cigarettes, or coffee. And if you get one of those three things and you drink it, it will give you, or smoke it, it will give you a fat grip of morale. And managing your morale is important in this game too, because as it turns out, when all your friends and family and everyone you ever loved is dead, and you're wandering an endless rusty wasteland with like, a board with a nail in it, trying to defend yourself from things that want to eat your liver out of your body, it's very, very hard to maintain a positive mind state. So anyways, uh, we'll go with, I've literally never seen cigarettes in the game in the hour and a half that I've played. I've seen a lot of alcohol though, so I'm thinking the best, most prudent pick is alcohol. Alright, let's start the game. I wish that door stayed in the background and kept knocking like that while this little progress meter was going up for the load screen. Like it just stayed there and keep getting banged on, and then when it gets to 100% it breaks inwards and then it fades black and then fades into the game. That'd be like a really, really sick effect to put in. Infected zombies are attacking people. Your house is safe, but electricity and water have been turned off, and there are few supplies left. In your last communication, you learned that the surviving people have gathered in Terminus. Arrive at the Terminus safely to survive and win. Okay. Uh, if we can find a radio, we can listen to the broadcast, and that'll tell us where the Terminus is. Right now, we have no clue where that's at. Uh, if you take a look right here, this is the game map. It doesn't seem that large, but trust me, it's usually about this big of a spacing between you and neighboring areas. So this is, in fact, a huge grid of suburban buildings. Everything from hardware stores, electronic stores, restaurants, the railroad itself. Uh, general purpose residential housing and so you'll kind of like learn and scout this place out as you're trying to figure out where the hell the terminus is on the map but anyways for right now how does the game function let's go through the ui because there's a lot to digest here top left hand corner you have the clock and your location and what temperature it is uh, you can swap this oh you can actually look to see okay i thought maybe that would swap it over to fahrenheit i didn't click that button yet but anyways, that apparently gives you an overlay of the temperature everywhere, so you can figure out how to get warm if you're in a pinch. The game functions very, very simply. Like, I know that the UI seems kind of busy and there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's actually a really simple game. Uh, basically, you have HP. When that goes down to zero, you die. You have your AP. That's the amount of things you can do per turn. Every action you undertake has an AP cost from picking something up off the ground to going through, like, some furniture and seeing if there's anything inside of there. Uh, aside from that, you've also got your satiety. Hunger? I'm just going to call it hunger because I have no idea how to pronounce that word. Uh, hunger. Uh, you got to keep this filled up. If it gets down to zero, you start to lose health every single turn. Not a lot. You can last like 40 or 50 turns without food. But still, a couple days without food, you're going to die. Uh, we've also got warmth. Warmth is what I just showed you with the overlay. If your character gets cold, bad things happen. You get too hot, bad things happen. Uh, we've got energy over here. Energy is effectively like our stamina. We need to sleep when it gets down low. This is, for all intents and purposes, our sleep meter. And then we have our morale, which is our mind state. We also have various details. Uh, we have our XP meter right here. You do level up. The game does have RPG mechanics. Every time you level up, you get to pick a new perk. Uh, we have our stats right here. I don't know if there's a way to increase your stats. Haven't seen one yet, but maybe there is. Uh, we also have our list of traits over here on the right. And then we have our backpack. Right now, we've started out with nothing but a combat knife. We've got ourselves like a K-bar knife or something on account of being a soldier. Uh, these buttons over here, you're not going to use them a ton. This is the end turn button right here. When you run out of AP, just click that and it'll take you to the next turn. These are all various actions you can undertake. And as you pick up more items in the game world, these buttons will fill out and there will be more of them up here on this console. The entire game has kind of of like a very analog clicky clunky UI and as a fan of things like Fallout and whatnot I instantly fell in love with it like even though I think there are still some things that could be done better with the UI uh, I very much like how satisfying just interacting with the UI is so anyways we're gonna move over to here and we're gonna search this cabinet right here inside the cabinet we found a map of the streets, we found a box of cereal, and we found a novel. I would like it if this menu right here, when it pops up on the search, a better way to do this, instead of just giving people, like, text prompts as to what they picked up, have this be up a little bit higher, and then have little slots that go bing, 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 and get filled in by the items that you've looted. Uh, draws back to, like, slot machines and how they function. People enjoy, like, kind of like a boom, 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 and like a reveal, basically. It gives them that little dopamine hit right there. So much better than text actually would. And then just, if, like, half the community size they don't like it, make it a toggleable inside the options, effectively. Uh, let's go up here, and we will grab whatever's in this cabinet. We found some wood glue and a towel. Okay. Over here... 
We have ramen, an antidepressant, and some sewing tools. Sounds good. And then down here, we've got a rag on the floor. I want to pick that up, so we'll put that inside of our inventory. We can use rags for all kinds of crafting, and so having like a large amount of rags around is never a bad idea. Uh, we'll go over here, and we found two guidebooks. Okay, so what have we picked up so far? Well, we've picked up antidepressants. Those are going to make our morale regenerate turn by turn. We have some ramen, so that's going to be five food that we can eat when we need it. We've got a box of cereal, which is eight foods, so like we've got enough food for the next day or two. We should be all right. We've got a couple of books. The street map, what that's going to allow you to do is it lets you open up the map and you can mouse over things and it will give you basically like a radar ping like so. Uh, it's very, very expensive though. So keep that in mind. So we'll do that. And there we go. We found a house. So we know it's in that direction now. And in fact, that house is actually pretty far away. Uh, we appear to be out in the country right now. The density is going to get a lot thicker uh, once we get into the suburbs proper. We also have a guidebook where we to read this, we would learn where a nearby police station is. We have another guidebook that tells us where a nearby fire station is. Both the police station and the fire station can have cars there, which will allow you to travel more quickly and with no stamina cost. And so, like, finding cars can actually be pretty useful for getting around. Uh, we also have a novel that allows us to regenerate morale in exchange for our AP. We have wood glue. We can use the wood glue to repair pretty much any tool that we have. We have sewing tools, which can be used to repair clothing. As of right now, we just have our basic clothing on, but if we get anything more rad than that, like a parka or like a jacket or whatever, it'll be here in the clothing slots and you can repair it. Your character automatically equips it. In this game, you never have to equip anything. So if you have a sweater, if your character gets cold, it's just assumed they will put on the sweater and the sweater will begin to lose durability, basically, inside your inventory, protecting you. It's kind of hands-off. Uh, we also have rags, which can be used for bandages. And it looks like we've got a towel, which helps us get rid of wetness, because this game does have weather. I don't know if there's snow, but there's definitely rain. And so anyways, we don't have any AP left, so we're going to bypass our turn. That gave us 10 AP back. The farther you move in this game, the more you save AP. So it always behooves you to travel many, many tiles at once if you can manage it. Now, there's a risk-reward element here. Moving slowly allows you to reveal the fog of war much, much more safely because, like, if you're moving, like, five tiles at a time, there's a pretty good chance you're going to walk into a zombie and then have, like, low AP or whatever. And so that's where the risk-reward comes in, and I actually think it's fairly elegantly designed. I do think that the furniture, it's all labeled furniture, just, like, in a generic way. If it actually had a name... For each of these, I would like it better, so this would be like a cabinet. This over here would be like a desk. This right here would be an entertainment center, you know, like a bureau and like a bookcase. Stuff like that is good for immersion. What I've found about zombie apocalypse survival games is that fans of the genre, myself included, tend to enjoy just a little, a little, little, just a little sprig of immersion with the entire experience. Uh, we've got all of our AP back, and we can travel to an unidentified place. Uh, the other option is... Oh, there's something connecting in between the house and over there. Okay. Well, let's make for the house, because we're going to need more food. I'm not happy about our food supply right now. Like, one or two days worth of food is okay, but I'd prefer to have, like, a lot of food. We've got blood outside. Chances are there's a zombie here. So we're going to take it nice and slow. I'm going to go in through the back window. Windows are sometimes unlocked. They're not always unlocked. Whenever you use a window to get inside of a building, there's a chance you will sprain your ankle. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. I could have just as easily gone through the door, but I didn't know if it was going to be locked or not. And I found that the windows tend to be unlocked a lot more than the doors are. Search this cabinet. We've got two fresh oranges and a fresh bread. We've got perishables. Okay, so we're going to want to eat those first. Uh, we've got 16 turns till that goes bad. We've got 84 turns till that goes bad. 14 turns till that goes bad. Let's go ahead and eat the bread right now. I need to find a way to cook the meat. Uh, if we find a lighter and we find some wood, I should be able to light a fire, and then we could cook that wood right there. Are we, I'm sorry, we can cook the... I mean, the wood's going to get cooked too, but you get what I'm saying. We can also cook the meat. All right, search through here. We found an axe, and we found some tool parts. Uh, tool parts, once again, like I said, this game is like a very, very abridged, like very, very kind of conceptualized Cataclysm DDA. So instead of bothering you with a million different types of loot, like circuit boards and string and fabric 
and, you know, wood fragments of eight different varieties. Basically, everything that is useful to craft is considered a tool part, quote-unquote, in this game. And if you have enough tool parts, you can basically build anything in the game. So, for example, to make a crowbar, I think you need, like, eight or nine of them. Uh, but we've got an axe, so that's pretty cool. It's fairly busted. I'm going to fix it because the axe is actually a really useful tool to have. So I'm going to fix that. We're all good to go. But until we find a lighter, there's not going to be a lot to accomplish. Sunset is at 8 o'clock. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. Uh, we can search the sofa over here. Got another antidepressant. Okay. Found a cardigan and a jacket. I'll probably only keep one of these. So this one gives us plus one temperature, five defense. So the cardigan is... Actually, they're both in pretty good shape. I think we can tear up clothing, too, if we go to the crafting menu, but I don't recall. Oh, I guess maybe we can't. Oh, no, we do have clothing right here. Uh, do we get to pick what clothing we want to shred? Yeah, let's shred that clothing right there. Perfect. All right, so we're... Oh, I don't have enough AP. All right, fair enough. I don't have any of my fun boy points. We'll move over to here, and we will search this guy. We found alcohol. There we go. Got some of us. We got we got some of that tequila. We're ready to go. I'm gonna move over to here, and we're gonna try to go to the next zone, and we're gonna rest inside the house that we uncovered with the guidebook. I think. Now this game does have kind of an interesting XP system, so you might be asking, how do you level up? Do you level up through killing zombies? No, uh, this is a linear meter right here. What that means is anytime you spend AP to do anything, you get that much XP. So technically, if you have enough supplies and enough food, you could just walk backwards in place over and over and over again and pace yourself into, like, the ultimate warrior. That's probably, given the way the game is designed, that's probably not going to happen. But theoretically, it might be possible. Uh, we've got, yeah, let's go ahead and search around a little bit. An aluminum bat. That means we can kill zombies. We could already kill zombies, but now we can kill zombies and it'll make that satisfying, like, tink sound. Like, it'll give you, you know, that, that real, real satisfying impact noise. Uh, we want to be closing doors behind us because I think we're going to sleep here tonight. In fact, I guarantee we're going to sleep here tonight. Our energy and our morale are kind of low, and the best way to get those two meters back up is by sleeping. Uh, for long, unbroken periods. In this game, the longer you sleep, the more benefit you get from it. And so, like, little two-hour cat naps are never really going to do anything for your character. But sleeping for, like, eight hours straight uh, does a world of good for your character. All right, so we'll come over to here. I don't think I've picked up anything that I can light a fire with. Let's go through the uh, backpack real quick. We've got nine turns left on the orange. I'm just going to go ahead and eat both of those now so that I don't have to worry about them going bad. Oh, that meal goes bad in four hours? Okay. I'll probably do something about that then. We still need to cook that meat too. Oh wow, we have, oh, a padded coat. Wow, that's a really, really nice coat. Okay, so we've got a lightweight jacket, cardigans, we've got a sweater over here. I don't really want most of these because they weigh weight. So I'm going to chuck most of them. I know I said I was going to shred them up. Oh, we have one match. Okay, well, let's see if we can light a fire. So the fire is right here. And I can throw stuff into it. Sure, throw that on in there. I'm going to pick up this plank. Too. I thought, logically, it would light the fire on the plank. I didn't realize that I had the capability to light a fire anywhere that I wanted to light a fire. Uh, it is getting kind of warm in here, though. But anyways, uh, let's grab the plank off the ground. And then we will do our best to light that bad boy. It has become apparent to me that I don't think we actually know how to cook the meat. 
Uh, we don't have a cook command or anything inside of here that would allow us to process the meat. I was going to try to cook it and see if that got rid of the... I'm sure there's got to be a way. Uh, but anyways... I don't know. Um, I was going to cook it like I thought it would fill in with like another option right here. But it looks like that's not actually a thing that you can do right now. Possibly because our character doesn't have any cooking skill, maybe. Like, we may need some kind of skill that we learn from, like, a cooking book or something. Because uh, some of these books can be read to give you perks if you're just, like, swimming in resources. Mm, I would like to... My aluminum bat's pretty beat up. I'll fix the axe first. We'll use the axe for now, and when that breaks, we'll try to focus on fixing the bat. I tried sitting it next to the fire, but that didn't seem to do anything. So anyways, uh, we need to get a little nap going. I don't know if the fire is going to spread. But let's crash out for a little bit. We do have a visitor. He's trying to get in right now. You can see him swatting at the window. However, he's going to have to go through multiple doors before he gets to us. So I'm just going to finish my sleep. Uh, it's going to take him way, way more than like six turns to get like through both those doors. It'd probably take him all day. Uh, so we'll just rest it off for right now. And as you can see, our energy and our morale are skyrocketing. I'll probably sleep till daybreak just to keep morale high. Actually, we've got antidepressants. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll take an antidepressant. There we go. Uh, you can't overdo it with pills, otherwise you get a status effect that's called headache uh, that makes things more difficult and annoying. Um, I'm going to eat the meat, and I'm just going to hope we don't get sick. Uh, we did not get sick, so that was 10 satiation that worked out pretty well for us. Uh, let's go ahead, and right now, in the dark, uh, you don't have a whole lot of visibility. If you're fighting zombies in the dark, it gives you basically a much, much lower chance to hit and deal damage. And so really, you don't want to be roaming too much after hours. Uh, where's our zombie at? Oh, there he is right there. I could go clunk him. I'll show you what the combat looks like. So if you want to fight a zombie, you walk up on him, you right-click him. It's going to take you to this menu right here. you got to decide what part of the zombie that you want to attack. If you hit them in the legs, uh, they'll end up becoming crawling zombies. If you hit them in the stomach, they will eventually die, I think. And if you go for the head, uh, they're actually, never mind, so... Legs make them into a crawly zombie. Stomach makes them have no attack power, so you're basically, like, cutting off arms or whatever. And then head attacks basically finish them off instantly. We've got to pick a weapon to do this with. I'm going to do it with the axe. There it is. That zombie is now downed. And that's the combat system. It's a very, very simple combat system. There's not, like, a whole lot to it. But honestly, combat is not really the point of this game. Like, yes, at a surface level, this is a zombie apocalypse survival game. But it's actually a resource management game. It's a game where you're trying to figure out like what you can afford to lose and use and abuse right now versus later. Uh, so we finished off two zombies first thing in the morning. Not, nothing like a little bit of bloody murder right when you start off in the beginning of the day. I have a disease? Oh no. So I can recover by sleeping. It decreases your HP and AP by one per turn. And it is cured by sleeping. Okay, uh, do I have any? I'm still on an antidepressant for another couple hours, so I'm not going to worry about that. But we'll go to the next house. And we'll try to move about as far as we possibly can. Uh, we're only losing like 0.6 of an HP right now because we're like warm and we're content and we're happy and we're well fed. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. We can probably knock that down even further by eating this ramen right here. I was going to say, with the well-fed buff, yeah. So we've got like 0.7 HP regenerating, so we're only going to lose like 0.3 HP per turn. It's no biggie. We should last through the day, no problem. And then I think we have painkillers as well, right? Oh, no, we have medicine. Okay, there's an item in this game called painkiller, and the painkillers will allow you to ignore all status effects until the duration of the painkiller is over. Uh, but I don't have any of those. Normally by now I have those, but... Take it on down to the corner. Hey, there's many zombies, actually. Okay, let's deck that one. And I need to decide if I'm going to kill both of these. I think I am. They drop loot, and I like loot. If we don't miss too much, we should be fine. Oh, there's a car out back, I think. Yeah, there is. There's a car out back. 
Ooh, let's go take a look in the trunk and we'll look at the car and we'll see what it's got. Let me get both of those cloths right there because I can use them to make bandages and things in case we get wounded. And they've already broken the window right here. Oh. I guess broken doesn't benefit me. It only benefits the zombies. Fair enough. Antidepressant has officially run out. Go ahead and loot some shelves and just kind of see what we get here. Now uh, we found a can of beans. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. That's good though because cans of beans are actually one of the best items you can possibly find for like food restoration. Uh, we'll search this guy over here. Couldn't find anything useful. I think this is the first time I've seen a car at a house. Normally, there's not a car at the house. Like, normally, you gotta go to, like, a police station or, like, a fire station or, like, a supermarket or something to find a car. Nice. A book and a guidebook. Sleeping pills and pliers. Uh, sleeping pills basically, like, double your efficiency at sleeping, in case you were wondering what those do. Uh, so if you take them before you sleep for, like, the next six or seven hours, you'll get double the benefit of sleeping. Or, like, a fat multiplier, basically, for long-term sleep pretty nice. I've used them in a pinch before and it's been very, very helpful. It allows you to sleep less and get more benefit. Uh, so the car, we can check it. The car has two fuel, it has some coffee, it has some nuts, but its condition is broken. It's roto. Okay. We can go around the front and we can try to fix it, but I don't think we have a, well, we have pliers. You can cut chain link weapons and use it, or chain link fences and use it as a weapon. I think we need a wrench to work on cars, if I remember correctly. I think we gotta have a wrench. And so this car may not be very helpful to us right now. Uh, I'm gonna chuck all these padded coats and whatnot on the ground just to save on space. Our morale is okay, our energy is pretty good. I think we've got time to go to one more site and see what we end at, but it may not be a terrible idea to scout first, because given that we have an issue, like we have food poisoning right now, knowing where we're going and if it's going to be like a restful space or a space where I'm going to be fighting for my life is a good idea. So what we will do is we will take the, where's the map at? Oh, I threw the map away. That's right. I thought I picked up another one, though. Yeah, well, that's life. Uh, we need to loot the car. I want the... Oh, we don't like coffee. I can take the nuts, though, and I can take the fuel. We may find another functional car, and fuel is always the hard part to come by. Uh, I guess we'll just take our chances. Oh, we leveled up. Nice. Uh, so you have accumulated enough experience. We can get Combat Instinct Level 2. Uh, each of the perks in this game can either be leveled up to a higher efficiency, or you can take something else. Uh, so we can get 100% melee attack damage. We can get Improvised Attack, which gives us bonus damage when attacking with tools like an axe. Or we can get Leg Strike. I'll probably go with Combat Instinct Level 2 since that affects everything. Let's go to the next map. Uh, we discovered a house, and there's a Zombo in front of it. All right. Oh, I can't attack him from the diagonal? Well, we better hope we hit. We did! Huzzah for us, but our axe is broken. It just can't do it no more. Uh, there is a bottle of meds right there. Those are vitamins. They make your energy regenerate for six turns. They are very helpful. Uh, sometimes your energy runs out at inopportune times in this game. And when that happens... Having access, mm, we'll hit him with a bat. What well, tink? Uh, I would like to hear like customized sounds for each weapon too. Like an aluminum baseball bat goes what well, tink, you know, and like a wooden baseball bat has that kind of like generic clunk sound that's like in every sound pack ever. And then with an axe, you get like the squishing, crushing sound, that kind of stuff. All things that I think should be worked on as the early access progresses, because I think the core gameplay is actually good. Like I said, it's a very, very streamlined, less granular version of Cataclysm DDA where you have a concrete objective that you're trying to accomplish and all you have to really worry about is managing finite resources. Uh, you don't have to worry about how to build, you know, a giant battle tank out of shopping, you know, super shopping center 
grocery carts. You know what I mean? And like learn how to deal with that system. You don't you don't have to like learn so many things to get into this game. We got lettuce and a cooked meal right there. A rotten cooked meal. I forgot to eat that. I should have ate it before we left. Rotten lettuce we don't really need. Um I'll eat those three for right now because that should be fine. We have like probably about three or four days worth of food left, so I'm feeling okay about our food situation. Not too stressed about it. I will pick up this rag. And then I'll wait a turn or two to get all my AP back. I'd prefer to sleep tonight in a room that doesn't have windows. Like a garage or something. Canned corn and a pistol. Nice. So we've got ourselves a gun. It does make noise, though. This gun does have guns and gun mods. Uh, there are silencers. There are sights. There are things you can add to your firearms to customize them. Suppressors and things of that nature. Uh, that bat is actually in really, really good shape. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I don't really have anything I can repair with for right now. Let's check this room. Ah, uh, every room in this house has a window. Hey, we found a flashlight. That's good. That means we are now moderately functional at night. Uh, so basically with flashlights and things like that, you've got to click on them inside your inventory and it'll turn it on for one turn. And brightness three means that it'll illuminate three tiles around you, uh, which is really, really nice, actually. You need that because it gets rid of the nighttime penalties for fighting if you end up holding off a horde of zombies at like two in the morning. Uh, but anyways, I would like to see a hot bar added to the game. Uh, sometimes going into the menu and taking multiple clicks to do like, you know, turn on your flashlight because you got to do it every single turn. If you're in like a combat heavy situation or coming in here to use pills or vitamins or whatever else, uh, I would recommend they actually get like an MMO style hotbar. They could either put it up here and it can just be like a gray outline with a transparent center. And there's like five of them over here. Maybe even link it to a stat like uh, dexterity or whatever. Modify how many quick slots you get just to gamify it a little bit. And then you could just press one, two, three, four, or five in order to automatically use that item without basically save yourself like three clicks in order to get into the menu. Uh, but that's one thing that kind of jumped out at me is I had one playthrough where I was in the dark a lot fighting zombies. It was just the way that things played out. And so what I learned from that experience is that having to open your inventory at the beginning of every single turn and turn on your flashlight so that you don't take fat penalties... A lot of clicking. A lot of clicking. And I think a hot bar would fix that very, very nicely. Uh, we're going to crash out right here. Hopefully the disease gets better. Hopefully we don't have any zombie problems. Uh, it does look like our health is coming back as we sleep, despite the fact that we are sick right now. So that's good. I don't know how many turns I have to... We don't have any indicator. It might be random, honestly. It might just be based on chance. Uh, but either way, we're going to rest till morning, and if it heals up, it heals up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It actually took the entire night. I had to sleep the entire night in order to get the disease to go away. But it did go away, so that's good. We're no longer, like, vomiting out of our nostrils, which is always the worst part about being sick. Like, I'm okay with, like, a, you know, like, if it gets it out, it gets it out. Like, everybody's got a yak every now and again. When you start getting it, like, like projectiles out of your nose, that's when you know you're really, really sick. And so, like, yeah, I kind of feel bad for our character right now. Rough day in the streets. Uh, we can get canned ham. Yeah, big old can of spam. I'm Hawaiian. I love spam. Absolutely. Put spam on everything. Put it in Simon. Put it in Musubi. Put it just plain on a plate. Put it on top of some rice. I, I don't even care. Every meal comes with spam. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and we've got... We can go to the Northwest, and we don't know what either of those places are. Honestly, this might be a good time to read some of these books and find some places. Let's go for the fire station. Let's figure out where that's at. Uh, so the location of the fire station. Ah, it's way back there. Never mind. So it's super far behind us. If I had read it in the first house where we started, meh, I would have, I would have known. It's kind of odd that our character, it said that we started out in our house. It's sort of weird that our character doesn't know that there's a fire station on the block behind his house. Like, 
where I grew up, I can tell you literally where every fire... Like, my, my hometown had like 140,000 people. It's a pretty decent-sized city. And I can tell you where every single fire station is just from growing up in that area. Like, all the way across town. Like, even on the sides of town that I wasn't in. It's weird that our character has another fire station behind his house. All right? It feels like information you should probably know. Uh, police station, maybe? And then library. Okay. Let's have a look at this map. So, library's over there. Police station's back over there. Actually, I'm kind of wondering if it generates the location when you pick up the book. Because if you notice, all of these are within, like, two or three hops of our starting house where we picked up all those books. And so, I'm thinking maybe when you pick up the book, it basically converts one of the generic locations into one of these around the place where you picked up the book, assuming that you'll use it quickly. I can't say that. 100%. Like, I don't know that that's the truth. But I do think that the cluster of stuff we discovered is a little tight. Around the place where we got all those books. Sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't mean for it to sound like my sentence was over. Uh, we found another house. Weirdly, we haven't found the train tracks yet, either. That's kind of like the first thing you want to do is find the train tracks. Because the train tracks always run to Terminus. And so around here somewhere, there are train tracks that are weaving their way through the map. And you gotta find them. And then once you find the train tracks, you kind of walk the train tracks until your supplies get low. And then you'll kind of like dip out into other areas to grab things and then loop back to the... T Basically, you start doing kind of a boing, boing, boing. Like out and back in from the train tracks to like places to loot. And then back to the train tracks to fi try to find the terminus. That's assuming you don't get the... That's assuming you don't get the radio, though. The radio, you can listen to broadcasts and figure out where it's at. Oh, there's a zombie over there. What is up, Undead Fred? How you doing, man? Bonk. My aluminum bat is broken. Physically and emotionally, he can bat no longer. The spirit of Casey Jones no longer resides within him. All right, we got a street map. Oh, cool, we found the thing that I threw away that I needed a second ago. Tool parts and a kitchen knife. All right. Oh, never mind, that's not the... No, we did get the street map. Okay, but I also have a map fragment that will tell me where things are at. You know the location of a hardware store, a pharmacy, the railroad. Nice. A railroad, a tunnel, and a house. Okay, let's look at that on the map. Oh, there we go, dude. That uncovered like a big old chunk over there. Okay, so there's a railroad that runs all the way down this side, it looks like. And it also appears as though there is another railroad. It's not running east-west, so it's got to be running north-south. Or at least curving. Okay. We'll probably keep going north and see if we hit it, and if we don't hit it, we'll know that it's running north-south, and then we'll just cut west to it. Uh, dangerous places are, are, are basically... Dangerous places are randomly put on the map. Dangerous place is not a place where you can visit. This is a collapsed building that's oozing zombies out onto the map. So everything adjacent to one of these tiles is going to have, like, way more zombies than it would normally have. I don't know why the music got all, like, intense right now. We found a potato and some bread. I can live with that. I'll eat the potato and the bread right now. Uh, I've got... Actually, my my satiety is full. All right. Well, then we'll let it, like, chill for a minute. But yeah, this is Terminus. I like the game tremendously. You can tell it's early on, but I actually think, like, the game is intelligently designed. The flow of gameplay works well. It is a rapid-fire zombie survival roguelike for somebody that's got, like, an hour to kill but doesn't have, like, all day to play the game and get established in other more sophisticated titles like Zomboid and whatnot. And so I actually, I think this game does fill a niche. And everything I've seen from the game so far has been competent. I have not had any bugs. I have not had any crashes. I haven't had any problems. Aside from, like, the addition of, like, a hot bar and, like, some minor things with the UI, I don't really have any problems there. I think that the core objective is good, like the idea of scavenging and looking around until you find enough things to figure out where the terminus is at, and then gathering enough supplies to go for it is a compelling, repeatable objective. And this game is only like in its first patch of early access, and it's already like totally playable and like fun, and so I can't wait to see what they add to the game. Uh, well done, developers. I'll see y'all later. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we are playing a little bit of Terminus. Tomorrow, we will be playing something else. Thank you for joining me. I don't have anything else. I'm going to take my leave, and thank you for the luxury of your time. Bye-bye, folks.